All right, Christian, so you got a little 20 hertz uh, shaky shaky. Let's check it out. So first looking at the quad, it looks like uh, you have a pretty light, uh, small frame, uh, some pretty big props on it, and we'll get to that in a minute. Yeah, nice little build there. I also noted that you have the um, little uh, antenna stubs here pushing out. Uh, which we'll touch on that a little bit as well. Uh, look like you did two logs, one with, I'm going to presume, without soft mount and one with soft mount. They both have the issue. So, And then uh, just looking at your diff and what some things are in there, it looks like you're moving the classic PT1 low pass filter down to 50 hertz, so really low trying to get to this noise, which obviously it's still not going to attack noise at 20 hertz. I uh, have all the notch, the static notch filters turned on. You, in addition, you have the stage two low pass filter really trying. So you have a, a ton of filtering pushed onto this thing and, uh, and uh, you're still having issues. And we'll touch on all that in a little bit. D-term low pass filter, 80 hertz, which is uh, 20 hertz lower than default. And that kind of sums it up. There's you know, some other things in there, but uh, that's the filter setup. So let's open up a black box log here, and you can see right here is your 20 hertz oscillation. So if I go ahead and do a mark point between this peak and that peak, you can see I'm right around the 20 hertz level here. So just to get to the gist of this real quick, you have a major wobble in some of your equipment. I'm going to, uh, if you go to tiny uh, CC, forward slash filter calc and I'll put a link in the description for, well it's actually there's a link in all the descriptions for it you can download this Betaflight Clean Flight Attacking Motor Noise Guide that I uh, put together this video right here I, this is a Joshua Bardwell video I would implement that uh, and it shows how you can use the configurator to uh, basically go into motors tab and run each motor independently with the props off and see what the vibration is from each motor. You must have a bent shaft or something, so check that out. Maybe you don't. Here, let's go into back to the picture. Uh, these are really large props on this smaller frame. I, I mean, they're, they're just normal props, but it's a really small frame. So if those are off balance, that could be an issue. Uh, I would check those if you have a balancer or just put on another set of props. The other thing that I've seen cause vibration is these little antennas sticking out. Obviously they're in direct line of prop wash, so I've mounted them this way and then gone back to just mounting them out the back. So that's something to to take a look at. You know, they could be vibrating back and forth. And uh, so, so, like I said, check that out. Do note that the wobble is on the pitch axis only. It's, well, it's not really pronounced on the roll axis. There's a little bit of something there, but it's mostly so the thing is wobbling back and forth, not side to side. So keep that in mind as you're trying to troubleshoot that. And you can see it's causing P-term oscillation and D-term oscillation. And they're both, like I said, on that pitch axis and they're both down around the, the 20 hertz. You're not going to be able to tackle that with any type of filtering setup that's productive. It's just way too low of noise hertz and you can see that huge spike I mean look at that huge spike way down here at 20 hertz so it's, it's just a vibration as well well no soft mounting uh, is going to tackle that it's something is off balance or the prop wash is pushing on those little uh, antenna stubs that we talked about or, or something else that I'm not even hitting what I love on this log that I wanted to point out delay filter delay here you can really see the filter delay so this is the input signal that the gyro is reading and because of the filtering it's delaying that signal back. This is still calculating at 8K, 8K. So each little piece of data is getting pushed through you know, to the motors. However, it's just offsetting. It's almost like the gyro is reading in delayed time. So there's a difference between filter delay versus computational delay. You don't have any computational delay, but due to the filtering, it's actually just offsetting back, or they call it a phase shift. It's phase shifting the gyro signal back in time, 
And if you look at it, you can calculate it. And if we zoom in here, now it's, it's a little subjective because we're trying to match peak to peak, but say we say the peak here is right there, and then we go out to here, you can see we're talking about eight milliseconds, roughly. Um, you know, you could, like I said, it's a little subjective. I could say it's seven, I could say it's nine. So seven to nine, let's just land on eight milliseconds of filtering delay with your current filter setup. So I went to my filter calc sheet and entered in your filter setup. And as long as I have everything right here now, this is a little bit of a variable. I just left the dynamic notch at uh, 280. But you can see, boom, we're getting around. Uh, so at 20 hertz, which is what we were kind of measuring there, we're getting 6.8 milliseconds of filter delay. So, yay, seems pretty close uh, on real samples. So that's a little bit on you know filter delay and, and just trying to uh, understand that it's not how quickly the motors are being updated. The motors are being updated at the uh, PID loop rate and your ESC rate. They're still being updated. It's just the data they're getting is shifted back in time because of that filter and that phase shift and filter delay. So anyways, that's a side, a side issue, but I, it was really pronounced in your log and I, I just wanted to take that opportunity. Okay, well, um, hopefully this helps some. It's really a mechanical issue. You're going to have to track down. Feel free to update the logs. Uh, appreciate the post, and again, I hope this helped. Thanks.